Gravity is the fundamental force of the universe. Uh, at the, the, the largest scales of talking about stars, galaxies, the universe, they are dominated by gravity. However, gravity does not get absorbed very well by matter. We're sitting here in a building, we're not floating off in space, we've got a building between us and the Earth. So gravity penetrates all matter. So for that reason, the gravity is passing through our detector and it doesn't really dump any energy in the detector the way an electromagnetic telescope would pick up light. So we have to actually look at the ripples in space-time. We have to look at the effect of gravity over all of space. And like other waves propagating through space, gravity waves too have various wavelengths or frequencies. We need LISA because it's looking at a whole new part of the spectrum of gravitational waves. It's a whole new type of science we're doing. So with the LIGO detections, they're looking at objects that are roughly the size of the sun, so anywhere from 1 to 100 times the mass of the sun. Uh, and in their case, it was about 30 solar mass black holes which were orbiting each other. Whereas with LISA, we're looking at galaxies merging. So it's no longer stellar-like objects, it's now galactic objects. So things which are maybe a million times the mass of the sun, the big black hole at the centre of galaxies. When galaxies merge together, eventually these black holes collide. When that happens, it rips the universe apart. We're looking for that universe vibrating uh, from these merge of these big, big events. Something you can never, ever do that on the ground. So LIGO will never be able to see the events that we see with LISA. The LISA mission will consist of three satellites precisely positioned to each other in an Earth trailing orbit. There, they will connect to each other via laser beams, forming a single detector. So the big difference between LISA and LISA Pathfinder is the, ten the length of the arm. So in LISA Pathfinder, we had two gold platinum cubes in our spacecraft, and they were separated by about 40 centimetres. Whereas in LISA, the little cubes were separated by two and a half million kilometres. To put that in perspective, that's about six times the distance to the moon. So it's, it's a long, long way. Work has begun on the LISA project. It will take over a decade to plan, design and build, then test the three spacecraft. When LISA launches in 2034, it will be able to detect gravitational waves from objects up to 100 times the mass of our Sun. The engineering challenges alone are daunting. So the challenges of a mission like LISA or LISA Pathfinder is the fact that it's built with, I think we had 40 different companies from 14 different countries building aspects. And unlike some of the planetary missions or some of the also astronomy missions where you have a camera and a telescope, our whole satellite is one instrument. And if we go to LISA, all three satellites form one instrument. So everything has to come together, it has to work, uh, and, and that's what happened. You know, we had a very great collaboration within Europe, and when it all came together, it worked as a, an instrument on day one. But none of that would have been possible without Albert Einstein, LIGO, and the LISA Pathfinder. Its success has paved the way for a whole new window into the mysteries of our universe. Gravitational waves allow us to see the dark side of the universe, so the things which are not shining light, for example, black holes. So now we can actually go out there and we can really observe these things which we could no other way to see. Uh, and also, the gravitational waves were predicted by Einstein, and this is one of the main pillars of general relativity. And with LIGO and even better with LISA, we can really start to probe general relativity and see that, that is actually theory which governs the gravity of the universe.